You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. And wow, uh, look who's in the studio. Uh, let's get a nice welcome for him. Surprise! It's Matt. How are you, Matt? I'm great. Here it's in the studio. Matt. Just had to use that sound. <laughs> <laughs> Just to mess with Ken. We got new toys. Well, yeah, speaking of, of Matt, I feel like this one's more your style. Yeah, so that's, more, that's more my style. It is, I'm yeah. about to drop a reboot. You're shocked. Shock jock. <laughs> you're, you're like Pitbull. You're around the world. That's um, why I came here. I am from around the world. I just flew in. But uh, well, boy, are my personal arms jet? Tired. Yeah, personal jet. What was the one Jeff Jeff, uh, Jeff and Kendra here is, is always, what did you say uh, his airline's called? Uh, Matt Jets. Matt Jets, yeah. Mm. What's the situation for snacks on Matt Jets? Uh, it's uh, probably juicy fruit. I don't know. Okay. We don't, we don't got a lot. Just gum? <laughs> just, just gum. It's what about, for years. What about, what's the Fruit Loop one uh, that goes really... Fruit by fruit the by Foot. The fruit by the Foot. Right. That's what it should be. And then you share with your, your partner. They got oh, Gushers, one, one Fruit foot Rollers, foot and, and Fruit, fruit by the row. Foot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Per section, one foot of fruit. Uh, well, speaking of uh, fruit roll-ups, uh, not really, but we have... <laughs> <laughs> no, Fruit by the Foot. Fruit roll-ups are different. Oh, yeah. Fruit by the Foot. I like well, how you called them Fruit Loops at the beginning, too, which is a breakfast cereal. <laughs> All right, let's just wrap this up, if yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap this up because uh, we have uh, another person that we'd uh, like to introduce. You're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> Uh, record scratch. Uh, anyway, we're super excited. Because Don't get today, used to this, by the way, guys. This you know, it's just a, a, a one-off. One it is a one a one-off. Uh, this is a very special uh, day with triviality episode. If you know uh, on Patreon, if you've ever been to our page or you support us on Patreon, you can go to patreoncom podcast. There is a tier called a day with triviality where you can uh, become a patron uh, for a month, basically, and then uh, come see us, hang out uh, in Chicago. We'll go do some activities, and we are so excited to. Uh, welcome one of our patrons uh, coming to us from Cleveland, Mark McKenzie. How are you, Mark? Doing great. Happy to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming. And uh, you drove here from Milwaukee, you said? Yeah. I also drove across the lake before that, but... Yeah, you and, and you drove across the lake with the car, though, not on a ferry. That's true. Yeah, it was like uh, in The Spy Who Loved Me, uh, when James Bond goes underwater in his, whatever it is, a Lamborghini or McLaren or something, turns into a submarine. Yeah. Very yeah. fancy car I got. Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much <laughs> for um, the Day with Triviality for doing this with us. And it was your girlfriend uh, who facilitated it for you? Yes, yeah, she organized it. Friends, family, all that. Got some money together. and uh, Oh, that's amazing. Paid for a birthday present to send me here. Yeah, so shout out to Taylor. She's amazing. Awesome. Best girlfriend I could hope for. Uh, well, thank you, Taylor, for doing that and, and to your family as well. And ha- when was your birthday? Happy birthday. That was a while ago. Okay. It was in February. Oh, well, it no. still counts. Be never mind. Back around again. Yeah, never <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to come to Chicago in February and sit around in the inside that's yeah that's true uh well tell us a little bit about yourself uh, for the listeners as well uh so just a big fan of doing trivia uh my job takes me traveling around michigan mostly so i go to pub trivia nights whenever i can play by myself win when i can which is occasionally but, nice uh, yeah just also like any sports geography history science so giant nerd <laughs> Aside from the sports, I guess. But well, you're in luck because I think Jeff is the one who wrote today's game. Is that They're right? Definitely Jeff? sports nerds, and Matt is one of them. But yes, I did. Awesome. So looking forward to that. It was a labor of love. Well, I know, I know it was because you haven't written a game in a while, and you said it uh, was a Herculean effort. Yeah, pretty sure um, most deliveries take less time, so they they <laughs> suck a lot more. I'm sure, but uh, yeah, certainly uh, a labor of, labor of love. So when you play uh, trivia, Mark, do you uh, have a team name? Or you just say like Mark, or what do you do? Oh well, I guess my name's normally riding solo if I'm playing by myself. Okay, I don't know, but you're not riding name. solo today because I got your back. Mm-hmm. So are you Tyo Cruz? Or? How, how do you like this? How about uh, <laughs> since you rode the ferry, we'll do Ferry Bueller's Day with Triviality. I like that. <laughs> since he, he rode the ferry, he's in Chicago. We're gonna mm-hmm. have like you know, Ken's gonna Bueller. hijack. We're gonna parade hijack the parade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're gonna do all the things in Ferris Bueller. We're gonna contemplate art. So, all right. Um, you don't want to know what it <laughs> cost us to, to arrange for the Ferrari to drive backwards today, but yeah. we're, we did it. So, pulling out all the stops. 
Matt, uh, what do you think? Do you want to be uh, pretty and cubby blue because we're going to the Cubs game today? <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to move on and start the game. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we, be, we'll be pretty and cubby blue. I had some other jokes, but yeah, ones that will that not make the air. Man. It hit us. <laughs> Knocked us back. It hit us like a nice uh, Randy Johnson uh, fastball. Mm. Yeah, or a bird, I guess, the first. R.I.P. Yeah, R.I.P. to the bird. Um, well, right, well awesome. Anyway. We have... That was a long time ago. <laughs> I know, so I'm <laughs> not going to get that reference. You get that reference, right? Oh, absolutely. You're sports... Okay, good. Okay. I mean, his uh, he does photography now, and his logo well, is a bird? dead bird, which is oh. awesome. He, he only photographs dead birds. <laughs> <laughs> the bird is in another dimension. It exploded. <laughs> Uh, all right, cool. so it's pretty in cubby blue uh, versus uh, Fer- Fairy Bueller's Day of Triviality. Uh, any rules read you would like from all the ones you've heard? Uh, just the standard. Standard? We'll go to, all right, so this is uh, Darren's gift to Mark. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. The cream will rise at the top. Oh, yeah. A gift as always. Yeah. Darren's always a gift. It's always a gift. His voice is a gift to we the We gotta world. get him back on, too. Yeah, we should. We should. His, his show's really fun. If you like supernatural and occult things and, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, true crime, I think, as well. So make sure you check out his, his programs that he uh, mentioned on his episode. But, Jeff... You're sitting there with your phone, not your iPad today, so it's it's a kind of a rogue maverick uh, hosting you're doing here. So we're ready. Downsize. Yeah, literally. Uh, that's because I realized my iPad's almost dead. Uh, <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> we're prepared. We're professional. It hit the sad trombone, and then that's the last one. Okay, there we go. All right. What do you think <laughs> this is my game? I'm hosting. There's going to be so much sad trombone. <laughs> How about you start the game right? Okay. All right. Why? That wasn't as meowy as It wasn't I as meowy as I was hoping either, yeah. <laughs> I was sad. Anyway, begin. All right, so, uh, yes, as as you guys have been joking, it's been a while since I've written a game, so I, I needed a little bit of inspiration, uh, a little spark to get it started. Um, originally, um, I was going to write all of these based on people in We Didn't Start the Fire, because we are notoriously bad mm. at all of those lyrics. The Fall Out Boy version. Yeah, the Fall Matt, Boy version. Which you consider the superior <laughs> version, Matt. Yeah. Obviously. Um, but I decided to go a different direction, um, but I kept it in the realm of music, and so, um, very unlike me, this is the first game I've ever done this. Um, it's not a triviality requirement, but it's something that a lot of people do now, is they write secret. category names. Oh. Oh. Um, it's not a secret theme, because um, they're inspired by the thing, so it would be pretty obvious what the theme was. Um, and I've chosen, uh, for my theme, uh, Song of the Year winners. Mm. Oh. Okay. Oh. And so I'm going to go, um, <clears throat> the main uh, 20 questions will follow that arc, swing round, and final will be a little different. Um, but I will read you the uh, the category, and we'll go from there. Maybe but, uh, Jeff's uh, favorite artist will be included here, <laughs> but we'll see. We don't know. They uh, they do go in chronological <laughs> order. I'm not giving the artist of the year or anything, but uh, we'll get started with a classic. Uh, this one is The Days of Wine and Roses, mm, Okay. Th- which I think Sinatra did a cover of, Neil, so mm-hmm. in case you're interested. All right, so uh, Days of Wine and Roses. What is it in your glass? Based on my research, there are typically five subtypes of wines that people consume. Reds, whites, rosés, sparkling, and what other type? Popular types of these wines include Port Sherry, Marsala, and Madeira. They can be made from red and white wines and run from dry to semi-dry, all the way to full-blown sweet. So me and Mark both have uh, different ideas, but uh, I don't don't drink wine at all. I don't either, so it's not really... So it's a toss-up. Why don't you decide between that and that? Okay. I mean, oh. Mark, your answer sounds more technical. Yes. So yeah. maybe we should go with that. I think I think the first two in the list are the the port and the sherry are this. Type. Okay, let's go with your answer. I think. Okay, so they're locked in, Matt. Um, you wrote down Syrah, like K Syrah Syrah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that might actually be a type of red wine, though. After okay. Thinking about it, you wrote down Prosecco, which I believe is a type of sparkling. I think that's right. And yeah. then I think the third thing you wrote down, Moscato, is a type of dessert wine. So I think that that might be correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you're a fan of Danny DeVito, look up Danny DeVito Limoncello. Not really related. Uh, on the View, it's kind of funny. He's wasted on it. It's his own brand. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna lock in with Moscato. Uh, we did think about dessert uh, wine, but we went with fortified. 
So um, dessert wines uh, usually are made of the sweeter versions of this popular type, which is fortified wines. Wow. wow. Nice. So Mark. it's got an extra level of Coming protection. Coming clutch. <laughs> yeah. Mark, are you a fortified fan? Is that like your thing? Not really. Okay. I just mm. heard of it. I watch a lot of Frasier, and they drink sherry all the time. Oh, so yeah. You're totally right. Now that you say that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, Mark, uh, sherry? Sherry? <laughs> Let me bu- bust open this bust uh, o- oh, the studio sherry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Triviality uh, sherry circa 2017 coming to you soon. Um, second question is a uh, Simon and Garfunkel classic, Bridge Over Troubled Water. While the name of the bridge suggests unity, especially as states or nations are concerned, uh, or united in a common purpose, the Confederation Bridge in Canada unites the province of New Brunswick with which Canadian province? The smallest by area. The Eight Mile Bridge is the world's longest bridge built over ice. Locked in. Oh, locked oh, wow. in right away. Is it uh, Newfoundland? Is that the smallest one? Um, or is it the Retriever or the Labrador? I forget. I think it's the dog one. Which one's that? Is that Labrador? I think it's Labrador. Okay. I Province hope that... of Retriever. <laughs> <laughs> it's either Labrador or is it or is it is Newfoundland the smallest one? No, Newfoundland's pretty big. I think it goes up the coast. Okay. Do, so is it the is it the Labrador one? Uh, I think so. Our, all of our Canadian friends are going to be so angry. We but... will learn what the provinces are one day. Okay. Today is not that day. You want to lock in with Labrador? Yeah, we're going to go with Labrador. There's Labrador. only like eleven of them at I two don't territories. Care. <laughs> Speaking of which, a little while back we said Montreal as mm-hmm. a, or uh, Quebec as an answer to for a city question, and he made fun of us. But there's a Quebec, Quebec city. city, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so, so we were back. we weren't right, but we were less wrong than you <laughs> asserted. Only by technicality. Several weeks ago, not by intention. No, by intention. Oh, you really thought it was Quebec City? Yeah. Could have been. It's it's got almost a million <laughs> people. Possible. This is its it's way not a of, tiny city. <laughs> this is his way of backtracking into a. Anyways. Anyway, what's your answer? So my answer over here is Prince Edward Island. I think that Labrador and Newfoundland are one province together. So, uh, And the correct answer is PEI, also known as Prince Edward Island. Mm. Actually, it's probably also known as PEI. But <laughs> <laughs> Did you know everyone on Prince Edward Island has a Prince Edward? <laughs> or Prince Albert, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the Prince Edward? A Prince Edward is... You don't want to know, you know, yeah, you know what that know. is, yeah. <laughs> Well, Mark's just crushing us here, man. So. Yeah, it's a good start for us. All right. Um, well, Matt, hopefully I'm leaning into a little bit more of your knowledge base here. Uh, question three, you've got a friend. Uh, in- I don't have any friends. <laughs> 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 the uh, In the 1980s, Converse's Choose Your Weapon television campaign turned which two on-court rivals into friends during filming? There was a lot keeping these two apart, including cross-state rivalries for their home states of Michigan and Indiana, their draft class, which was separated by a year, playing on separate coasts, and one digit in their jersey numbers. (laughs) We're locked in. (laughs) Figured. Yeah. Do you have any idea? Yeah, I think I'm locked in. The jersey number thing I didn't know, but uh, I guess I can go with, I believe it's Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. Yeah, Magic was 32, Larry was 33, everything else fits uh, Magic and Bird. Yeah, and uh, the correct answers, uh, Irvin, Magic Johnson, and Larry Bird. So uh, initially, I guess Larry uh, or Johnson thought Larry Legend was uh, way overrated, and Bird thought Magic was just an L.A. show-off. But, uh, <laughs> you know, sneakers bringing the world together. So Nothing they can't do. Didn't so. they have a whole campaign, too, where they were playing horse uh in the, the a stadium or whatever, and they were throwing it. That like, was a McDonald's commercial. It was McDonald's, that's right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, question four, just the way you are. Uh, with a half-life of over 160 trillion times greater than the age of the universe, tellurium-128 is the element with the longest half-life. In 2019, scientists were utilizing a giant detector full of noble gas to look for dark matter. Instead of finding dark matter, they stumbled across another scientific unicorn, the decay of atoms from the liquid in the tank. This decay was the rarest process ever observed in the universe. What was the element used in the experiment? A certain pop culture girl and I are glad this was a 21st century discovery. Spelling oh, notwithstanding. Jeez. I think I lost half my life. <laughs> I, and I only, that, that whole question and now <laughs> the one little one little hint at the end and we're just like, okay. Did you catch that? No. I think it's. I'm, I, I, my I, mind was too busy making a joke we're, about we're getting lo- we're being locked in. We're locked in. in the I didn't. I didn't have to listen to any of that question. Now, I mean, except for the it. last <laughs> sentence. Do you know who the girl of the 21st century is, Neil? Uh, the girl of the 21st century. Mm-hmm. 
Do you? It's Xenon. The oh, oh, yes, good call. I believe call. that's the, the like Xena Warrior Warrior Princess. No, it's oh, a it's, it's a it's a Disney it's Channel show. If, oh, oh, Inner Drama. If yeah. that's not the clue, we're gonna jump Jeff after yeah, the show. So just... What was what was the thing you said, Mark? About uh, the, uh, was it getting laid? Is the oh yeah, he said something about the rarest thing in the universe. Oh. I was gonna, I was thinking of jokes about that. <laughs> <laughs> for some, for some, yeah. Um, you want to lock in with the uh, Xenon? Xenon, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we said Xenon. Yeah, the answer is Xenon. I, punk, you made us listen to three paragraphs of questions. <laughs> How dare you make us listen to science? I know. Well, the thing was, you would also be mad if I just asked you a Tellurium 128 oh, I have, question. Yeah, so I would have no idea. I really couldn't win there. Um, all right. So question five. No wonder this game took him so long. He's writing <laughs> essays over there. That was a Neil question if I ever heard one. Oh, it I, was, yeah. I've got some Neils in here. That's the only way I could have done that question, for sure. <laughs> Uh, the next uh, question is in Betty Davis' eyes. Betty Davis won her first of several back-to-back -back Oscars for back Best Actress for which 1938 film? The film title likely describes a derogatory term for a woman and not the Phoenician wife of Ahab, who, according to the account in First and Second Kings, pressed the cult of Baal on the Israelite kingdom and was killed in accordance with Elijah's prophecy. Mm. Oh, jeez. So Matt, I can see the uh, the poster. I'm having a little bit of trouble coming up with the name, but I think it was a website in the mm. '90s or something or 2000s. Do you remember that one? That's uh, something that good old Jr. would call the ladies on WWE program. Oh, oh, Jezebel. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll lock in with Jezebel. I think that's the correct answer. Yeah, that's still a website. Is that's, it still? That's, that's an active website. Okay. Um. Yep. As you guys were uh, talking about it, I did. I was able to come up with that, but unfortunately, we locked in first, and we went with uh, Delilah. Mm. And uh, yeah, you guys figured it out just a little bit too late. The correct answer here is Jezebel. It took Neil a while to get there. We were racking our brains for a while. We were, yeah. It's a that's a hard one to remember, but yeah, good uh, good question, Jeff. Well, thanks. Well, we've got uh, forty points here after five. Oof. Yeah, that you have. You only missed one question that last one, and we've got uh, thirty. We've picked up the last three questions, so I think we're we're firing on all cylinders on both sides now. All right, that takes us on to question six category is every breath you take <laughs> multiple choice question yay uh, <laughs> oh, triviality first uh i think we've had them before yeah, that's possible. which tantric direction <laughs> uh, as much as i wanted to write a sting question i wrote a science question because of course i did uh this is why it's multiple choice head shakers if you laid out the lungs flat, they would cover the size of the court of what sport? The right lung is larger than the left. The left lung is made up of two lobes, and the right is made up of three. Here is your option set. Ready? Mm -hmm. uh, soccer, squash, tennis, boxing, or basketball. How large are the lungs if you lay them flat? I know from experience that the answer is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> like Ken likes flaying lungs. Okay, we are uh, we're locked in. I think it, I think we could throw out basketball and soccer. I yeah. think that's too big, and I think and I honestly cannot think of how big a squash court is, but I think it's it's roughly a tennis. Which one is squash again? I don't even remember. It's not like shuffleboard. What's it's like a pumpkin? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it's the one where people are always going. Hah! Yeah, as I walk by. I hmm. think it's the the uh, the half, like a racket. Oh, kind oh, of right, thing. right. It's, it's, so it's not like a pickleball ball court, Jeff. They're uh, all basically the same court. Yeah. Uh, same so, <laughs> so you're thinking it's either squash, tennis, or boxing. Yeah, and I would I would lean, I would lean boxing. I think I, it can't be that big. I, I can't imagine either. And just from having uh, pneumonia recently in my left lung, mm -hmm. um, they took it out. I feel inside of me. Scrubbed it up, put it back in. <laughs> yeah, they, they put it back in and then they bit a little piece of it off in honor of uh, Mike Tyson. So we can go boxing. <laughs> uh, we're just saying tennis. Uh, yeah, it wasn't uh, trying to lead you um, down any particular path, guys. Court, I just met the playing field here. Um, but the correct answer is tennis. Mm. Mm, nice. That's a, that's a big organ. Meters. Yeah. Big oh, organ. That's so, yeah. what she said. <laughs> so when you're saying laying out, you're talking about like if you had a steamroller and it just steams you like out. like laid them flat. Yeah, okay. Cut them open, spread it out, and stretched it. We love talking about organs being spread out and filleted. Do we? <laughs> On the Halloween episode, maybe? I don't oh, know. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, this isn't even... Do, in... do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, this isn't even intentional. I can't believe I did this. Uh, next question. What's love got to do with it? Mm. I wrote another tennis question. That's uh, another question about organs being played. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, this one's the heart, of course, because I wrote What's Love Got to Do With It? No, uh, What's Love Got to Do With It? There are four professional tennis players who have won career Golden Slams. Golden Slam is one of the rarest achievements in tennis. It means winning all four Grand Slams and a singles gold medal at the Olympics. There are four tennis players who perform this act in the open era so far. Andre Agassi, Rafael Nadal, and the formidable Serena Williams. Williams is also the only person to have completed this feat in both singles and doubles play. Who is the fourth player? A woman and the only member to compete this feat in a calendar year, 1988. All right, uh, we're locked in. I'm leaving this one to Mark. Okay, so uh, Mark uh, showed his sports prowess over there. Um, you can put your shirt back on, though. Um, Matt, uh, what do you know about uh, women's tennis in the 80s? I feel like there's only like a few big hitters, right? Like Steffi Graf. Yeah, Steffi Graf is a good bet. I, I remember getting one wrong about her previously because I thought that she was later than she was. So 88 might be right for the time she was dominating well, you wrote uh what is martina hingis martina hingis and then there's what monica, monica sellis. sellis but d- monica sellis is definitely later than, okay and than then we... martina navratilova and that's roughly the time too for her okay late, late 80s so i'd be between steffi and uh navratilova but i think steffi graf's a good guess I okay th- i think that that's some and it'd be fun if her and andre agassi were both part of it because they were married it fits in with jeff's time. uh filleting organs theme because if you take a skin organ you can graph, graph you yeah, can graph yeah, yeah. so okay that's the stream of conscious <laughs> yeah <right>. so <laughs> <laughs> like stuffy graf what the hell's wrong with you <laughs> yeah i didn't want to overthink it stuffy graf's the first name that came to mind walked in with that yeah, and you both are correct. It is Steffi Graf. It totally was Jeff's plan. Look, I mean, it's, it's obvious. Mm-hmm. Skin Graf. Remember that for the next one. Yeah, I don't know what it's going to have to do with the next one, but uh, the next one is in That's What Friends Are For. Irish novelist, playwright, and literary giant Samuel Beckett moved to a small commune in France in 1953, the same year that one of his most famous works, Waiting for Godot, was published. It was there he became friends with Boris Rosimov and his son, the Rosimov family lived in the same commune, and Boris would occasionally play cards with Beckett. Not much is known about Beckett's relationship with Boris's son, except that he was known to frequently drive him to school in his pickup truck. Who is the famous child and friend of Samuel Beckett? Two hundred percent. Okay, uh, we can lock in. Ken, do you have any idea on this? No. Uh, and Matt just was like, I just came in hot. He stole the pen. Hot. He was like, I got it yeah. down. What about so? I like how we can afford Russian. two pens. So it's a he, Russian guy. But he stole the, the, the Nabokov, Vladimir Nabokov. Is that an author? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can lock him with that. Oh, wait, you said an unlikely friendship. Well, yeah, an, an older man and a child used to hang out. You're trying to like, so but, like a bunny. Oh, so he was um, befriending like a goose or something. Yeah, Nabokov so would be like would, the right time, I think. Uh, I don't know. I mean, someone who. Is old now. I don't know, like seventies or something. Reminds me of Big Daddy. You and your old <laughs> balls. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. We can lock in with that. I'm not a big modern Russian author. Person. You're not. I, I thought you were. No. no. So Matt, enlighten us, because you you knew this. So if this is correct, if this is not correct, I'm gonna look like a big idiot. Um, but I think of... you are because I'm pretty sure the reverse of this question did come up a f- yeah. like a hundred and something um, episodes. I saw ago. a documentary on WWE programming, and I believe that this is oh. actually Andre the Giant. That's totally right. Now that you say that, yeah, you are correct. It's Andre the Giant, and uh, apparently he loved telling everybody on the set of The Princess Bride that he used to hang out with Samuel Beckett. Mm-hmm. So, well, I've never heard that. Now, when you said it, it like totally clicked, but I never would have pulled that just from the yeah. clue. Unfortunately, um, he was unable to take the bus uh, when yeah. he was a kid because he was big. already like when he was twelve years old, he was already like six foot four and like <laughs> you know a couple hundred pounds. He didn't really fit in the the seats, so Beckett would uh, let him ride in the back of his pickup truck as he would go to town. And apparently he did that for other kids as well. But What's your favorite? That's concerning. They, well, would, yeah. <laughs> uh, they would chat up about cricket, apparently. They were both big fans. Cr- crickets. Not not cricket. Crickets. Jiminy Cricket. They were big <laughs> fans of insects. <laughs> Matt, what's your favorite Andre the Giant story? Um, I know you know a lot of them. I, it's a lot of his the... room-clearing uh, farts. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is one. Uh, it, it's drinking entire 30 cases as kind of like a pregame. So he, he was he was a I mean, a I imagine man. his metabolism when he was nearly 500 pounds was, yeah. must have been pretty good. Mark's getting a taste of, you know, because we have a lot in common with Andre with the Triviality Studio here that there are room-clearing farts in here because there's no mm. ventilation. So And I drink a 30 case before. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So you're getting all that, Wade Mark. Wade bogs in it up on the plane. <laughs> Rest in peace. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, this one really easy. A uh, very simple question. Um, Says you. No, it's a simple question. I okay. didn't say it was an easy one. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, don't worry. Be happy. Who actually wrote that song? Note for note. All right, well, we're going to lock in over here because we've seen a lot of these CDs before. We talked to Mark. You only had two CDs, you said, but we've owned <laughs> a lot of, of CDs. Oh. We, we've seen these in the stores before, so we, we're going to lock in. You could just... Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was sung by Bobby McFerrin, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we said Bobby McFerrin. Yeah, that was just an easy one to oh, try. I thought it was a trick. No, uh, no, just messing with like, you. Who actually wrote this? I thought you were going to be like, oh, Barry Manilow wrote it on his time <laughs> off. <laughs> All right, and um, here's uh, the next question, the last one in the round. Tears in Heaven, into the 90s. The NeverEnding Story is a 1984 kid-oriented fantasy film that deals with some rather adult themes. The movie is largely remembered for one scene where the young hero loses his loyal companion, his horse Artax, in the swamps of sadness. The white horse is quickly overwhelmed by the relentless swamp, leaving the young boy distraught. I guess it's also remembered for being the namesake of what metalcore band from Yorba Linda, California, who takes their name directly from the main character. We can lock in. <laughs> <laughs> As are we. <laughs> uh, pretty sure this is a Treyu. We also said a Treyu. Yeah, you guys are right, a Treyu. <laughs> so when this when the horse scene, so the horse scene really distresses uh, kids, but the horse is in the movie for all of one minute mm. before it dies. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, but, but I guess the the filming of, of it was actually pretty horrific. Yeah. So uh, not not cool, but uh, it is funny in a in a film like sense because everybody cares about this horse, but the screen time of the horse is so minimal. Well, there's a mm -hmm. great and it comes back at the end. Spoiler alert: yeah. if you have a green thumb, uh, as they would say, uh, there is a, a pottery potted plant thing you can get where it's, you put your uh, you put a little thing in the pot with the dirt, and it's the horse and uh, a tray you. And their, their heads are just popping out of the dirt. Like a chia? Yeah, like a chia thing. But uh, it's like, yeah. <laughs> but well, yeah. We, we've got... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, train you. <laughs> we've got 80 points after 10 questions. And uh, we have 70 points after 10 questions. Yeah, before I get into the swing round, I think today's a pretty big day, Neil. Uh, yeah. Am I wrong? No, no. Thank you, Jeff. I almost completely forgot about it until I looked at the calendar. Uh, but today is the release of uh, my new book. It's called Behind the Screens, Illustrated Floor Plans and Scenes from the Best TV Shows of All Time. You've heard me talk about it the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's all uh, illustrated by uh, an artist from Spain named Inyaki, and there are 35 TV shows, uh, 60 floor plans, and over 250 illustrations of behind-the-scenes Easter eggs and uh, special trivia nuggets from a bunch of different TV shows. And uh, Mark, uh, you got an exclusive look here today, so uh, what was your initial reaction from seeing the book? A lot of little trivia nuggets and good illustrations, so fun to read through. Definitely worth getting. Thank it's you. Got a nice, uh, nice hardcover book there. Mm -hmm. Put yeah. it on your coffee table. Put it on your shelf as a, you know, talking point. Put you it don't on have a coffee table. Put it next to your curate. Put it on your floor. We don't care. Yeah, Just keep buy it in one. your bathroom. You know, put your phone down. Read a book. Yeah, get it's got flag uh, that book. Get that. Get the book flag. It's got a chapter <laughs> on the office for Jeff. It's got the Simpsons for Matt. It's got uh, Fraser for Mark. He mentioned he likes uh, watching. Frazier and uh, Sex for Ken, and the city. Sex in the City. Ken, yeah, yeah, you're notable grump. So <laughs> Such, a Miranda. <laughs> Such a Miranda. Such a Miranda. But yeah, it's out today. So go to stores or if you want, uh, AmazonBookshop.org. I appreciate your support. And hopefully I'll get to do a third one, which might be fully trivia related on a pop culture subject. So we'll see. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Well, okay. I think uh, that's awesome, Neil. And uh, I'm impressed that you wrote one book, uh, which is infinitely more than the rest of us. Uh, and then two, that's quite the feat. So. Thank you. I haven't gotten fired yet, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> That's actually the name of uh, Neil's third book. Quite, I haven't quite got, the feet. I haven't, quite the feet. <laughs> and it's all celebrity feet. I'm, I was, I'm waiting for uh, episode four. I haven't gotten fired yet. I have a, the Neil fee tips, scale, which is zero tips, out of ten. Tips Neil and tricks to not getting scale. fired. Neil fee scale is zero out of ten every time. It's like, it's like Sex Panther. 100% of the time, it's zero out of ten every time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I appreciate that, and... We'll head into today's swing round. So uh, I'm taking a break from the kind of overarching music theme here. The swing round is all about warping your sense of time. I'm going to give you two or more events that happened in the same year, and I want you to tell me the year in which those things happened. That sounds easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there's a good mix of ones you will know and ones you might not. So... Um, your first one here, The Wizard of Oz is released in theaters, and World War II starts. Number two, 
Harriet Tubman dies, Rosa Parks is born, and Woodrow Wilson is sworn in for his first term as president. Number three. These happened actually only a day apart. Doctor Who hits TV screens, and JFK is assassinated. Number four. The Wall Street Journal publishes its first paper. The Eiffel Tower is inaugurated. Nintendo is formed. Van Gogh paints Starry Night. And Jack the Ripper is tearing up Whitechapel. Number five. Anne Frank, Martin Luther King Jr. are both born. And Black Tuesday. Next one. Mozart ends his time with the Salzburg court and starts working freelance in Vienna as the United States adopts the Articles of Confederation. Next, the first wagon departs on the Oregon Trail. Dickens publishes A Christmas Carol. The first fax machine, the electric printing telegraph, is patented. Vitamins are discovered by Casimir Funk and the Titanic sank. Next one here is the first generation iPod is launched and Mauritania becomes the last country to outlaw slavery. And number 10, Francisco Franco dies ending fascist rule of Spain and Microsoft is founded. And I was so excited about this one, I threw in an 11th one, which is pretty atypical. Um, and I don't think anyone's going to get it, so it's worth 25 points. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's favorite year. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton is born. Galileo is born. And Abel Tasman cites New Zealand for the first time. So if anyone can give me that year, I'll give you 25 points. Because I know it's not going to happen. Mark's pretty smart. We'll, I, see. we'll see if I can surprise you. <laughs> all, all right. Well, we have the uh, swing around questions. Let's uh, take a break and see what we know. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. And we are back with our answers. Uh, Jeff, take it away with those descriptions again, and we'll give our ears. All right. Uh, thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, we are going to Do get... you, though? Do you? <laughs> usually uh <laughs> all right so what was the year that you had for the wizard of oz and the start of world war ii uh we had 1935 uh neil being a big oz head uh we said 1939 and 1939 is correct there was actually a little bit of overlap where wizard of oz was still likely in theaters uh when they invaded poland in mm. september of 31 or 39 apologies all right, and the next one, Harriet Tubman dies, Rosa Parks is born, and Woodrow Wilson is sworn in as president for his first term. We said 1913. Mm. We had the same discussion. We thought it was in the teens, so we just picked 1914 on a whim. And 13 has it. Wow. All right, I think we're going to get probably both teams on this next one. Uh, Doctor Who hit the TV screens in uh, jolly old England, and JFK was assassinated in what year? Correlation. <laughs> 1963. Yeah, I feel like everyone remembers where they were when Doctor Who came out. We said 1963. <laughs> there is a correlation. They were both uh, 1963. All right, so I gave quite a few clues on this one because this one I think is a little bit harder, especially as you go back further in time. Uh, Wall Street Journal, Eiffel Tower, Nintendo, Van Gogh, Jack the Ripper. Uh, I think I'm writing my own. Uh, we didn't start the fire over here. <laughs> what year was that, guys? 1889. Yeah, we knew uh, Jack the Ripper was 88 to 91, and we believe the Eiffel Tower uh, was at the World's Fair at 89, so we said the same. You guys are right, 1889. All right, next one. Anne Frank and Martin Luther King Jr. were both born in this year, and uh, Black Tuesday happened. We said 1929. Yeah, we were between 28 and 29, knowing that it closed out the decade with Black Tuesday, but we went with 1929. Yep, and uh, Black Tuesday was the start of the uh, Great Depression, stock market crash of 29. All right, this one, a little harder. Uh, I didn't want you to get them all. That's that's not fun. Uh, so Mozart ends his time with the Salzburg court, uh, starts working freelance in Vienna, and the United States adopts the Articles of Confederation. I always feel like Mozart is so much earlier than he is. Yeah. Um, but we said 1780. 
I like the idea of a freelance Mozart, like going to cafes, going, oh, "Could they play piano for you?" Um, okay, we um, <laughs> new character, <laughs> new character. <laughs> freelance Mozart. Freelance Mozart. <laughs> Could you spare a few uh, dollars for me, please? Um, it anyway, sounds remarkably like Dutch boy. <laughs> He's like a more refined <laughs> well, Dutch he's, boy. He's Austrian, so um, so yeah. We uh, initially Matt was like, "Oh, maybe 1763," and I was like, "Well." It's the United States Articles of Confederation. They weren't the United States yet. And we're like, oh, that's right. And then we said, maybe it was just a year after the declaration. So we said 1778. Yep. So um, the um, 1770s, Mozart spent um, with the Salzburg court um, under their their, um, patronage. Uh, 1781 Mm. was the year uh, the Articles were. Wow. So that was the end of the war. Yeah, you guys were really close on that. Do you know uh, Freelance Mozart's favorite piece to play? The Salzburg Shuffle. (laughs) All right. <laughs> <laughs> what if I what have I done here? here I'm, I'm dropping the bomb on a new impression. Seven, I think. Oh, that was so lame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll do that one. Mozart. <laughs> oh, freelance Mozart. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's the movie kind of a, a guy goes back Pitbull goes back in time and becomes Mozart and as a DJ. <laughs> It was actually Pitbull the whole time. <laughs> DJ Jazzy That's Mozart. why he's Mr. Worldwide. So I was saying there should be a movie where a serial killer goes back in time and they're Jack the Ripper. But yeah. you're saying it should be Pitbull going back in time and it's actually Pitbull is Mozart. Yeah. And he goes, he's what's the up, man, Salzburg? He's the man known as Mozart. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's really weird, though, because there's not a lot of Mozart songs where they just randomly go, Miami. <laughs> 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 All right. Question seven. The first wagon departs on the Oregon Trail. Charles Dickens publishes a Christmas carol. And the fax machine is invented. Technically the electric printing telegraph, but we're going to say the precursor to the fax machine. We said 1845. I believe 1845 is where the Oregon Trail video game takes place, but I think this might be 1843. And you guys are right. 1843. What? And we got that on the Christmas carol. I had a feeling. Yes, Colleen is directing a Christmas carol for the fall play. So I've been seeing many versions of it littered around the house. Yep, uh, December of 43, and it's sold out almost immediately. So been a classic ever since. And speaking of Ken, a little quick aside for Trivia Nuts, uh, we took a tour of the Dickens' home in London, and you might appreciate this, but every home in England at the time had a pet hedgehog that they had left in the kitchen to eat all the bugs. Really? Yeah, so they had this huge hedgehog, and we're like, why is this hedgehog here? And the guy's like, oh, all the, the families that had uh, money would k- keep a hedgehog in the kitchen to eat all the bugs to keep it clean. So if you're a hedgehog rich, you were okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it worked. All right. I yeah. always wanted hedgehog money. <laughs> Number eight, uh, vitamins were discovered, and the Titanic sank. Uh, we said 1912. Yeah, uh, no one ever uh, forgets the day vitamins were discovered. We said 1912. And you guys are correct, 1912. All right, this one is much more recent, but I think just as tricky. The first generation iPod was launched, and Mauritania became the last country to outlaw slavery. What year was that? So I feel like the iPod was sometime during my high school tenure, so we said 2003. We were actually thinking earlier, thinking that the first iPhone was 2005 or six, figuring that it was a much later model of the iPod. So we ended up saying 1999. Oh, you guys literally split the difference. Uh, 2001. Wow. You were the closest, Mark. Yeah, so it came out right before you and I were in high school, which is why everybody had them then. I would have been a junior. Or no, a sophomore. When did the first Zune come out? Um, Who cares? (laughs) The Zune. It went away uh, about the same time. So, uh, (laughs) All right. And the last official question, uh, question 10. Francisco Franco died, ending fascist rule of Spain, and Microsoft was founded. We said 1973. Oh, the 70s were interesting, too. Yeah, we couldn't figure it out. We thought it was like early 80s, like with the garage and everything. So we said 83. Well, 70s are correct. Uh, right in the middle of the decade, unfortunately, 1975. Mm. Uh, so if you ever look and the little Microsoft logo pops up, right? Now for the with bonus. The copyright. And now for the, the insane. The bonus that everybody's been waiting the for. The insane <laughs> bonus that I was like, I don't think anyone's going to get. The so bonus it's, Jonas. It's worth 25 points. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton and Galileo. We're both born in this year, and Abel Tasman cites New Zealand. That one's more just flavor text. I just thought it was interesting that two of the most influential scientists of uh, the last few hundred years were born the same year. 1606, we say. We went earlier and said 1514. Uh, Well, Ken, you're going to be relieved to hear you were much closer, but still wrong. Uh, The year was 1642. Wow. If you got it right at home... 
uh, comment uh, either in the crop or on the Discord. We'd love to see if anyone got it. Dead you're right. the smartest. Give yourself yeah. 25 imaginary points. <laughs> Speaking of 25 points, that's how many we got. So we're at 105. And we picked up 30 points, bringing us to 100. All right. Good scores. I uh, Not going hard enough, I guess. Mm-hmm. We'll Some see. would say it's anyone's game. Let's jump into the second round. All right. And we're going to start the second round here with question one. Uh, Streets of Philadelphia was the inspiration. One, two. <laughs> I had to finish it. Sorry. Three, four. <laughs> I, can't, I can't leave it hanging there. <laughs> it, just, make, it would eat at you all day. It would. <laughs> all day in the back of Neil's mind. He's just hearing three, four. <laughs> Should have said it. Should have said it. <laughs> A trendy thing to do in Philly is visit historical landmarks. One of the hidden gems is the Women's History Trail of Philadelphia, which will take you to a home Harriet Tubman was said to have used on the Underground Railroad and to the home of which internationally acclaimed author in Percasey. The tour includes viewing many items that speak to her Pulitzer Prize winning writing skills, like the typewriter she used to write the 1931 novel, The Good Earth. The museum's thought-provoking and engaging tour experience carries on her humanitarian legacy of helping children achieve good health, education, and job training. All right. uh, We have a guest over here. Uh, We think it fits the Pulitzer Prize angle. We're going to lock in. I'm really not sure on this one. I I recognize the title, The Good Earth, but I don't really remember the author. I don't really recognize it. I don't know. I was trying to think of female authors. Should we just say Plath? Yeah, that works. Ah, Sylvia Plath. That's a a good guess. Um, The Bell Jar is one of my favorite works of hers. Matt and I were uh, were discussing, and we think uh, Toni Morrison, uh, maybe it was like one of her first books, because I know she lived for quite a long time. So we said Toni Morrison. Uh, unfortunately, neither team was picking up on the hints here. Um, I said a uh, trendy thing to do. You don't want to buck the trend. And hidden gems often considered in the class of the 12 normal gems. This is Pearl S. Buck. <laughs> 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 you idiots. <laughs> uh, we were definitely going to pick up on that. <laughs> It's like, where were the clues in that word salad you gave us? <laughs> oh, they're in there, man. They're in there. Category, the buck stops here. Yeah. That was a tough one. Definitely don't want to buck the trend. That's exactly what I was thinking when you said trend. Yeah. I figured for, you guys for, would just know it. That was mostly just flavor text in case you wanted John to make sure. Candy, who played Uncle Buck. Yeah. <laughs> Ken does have a tattoo, Pearl S. Buck. The buck stops here. That's right. All right. Now everyone's favorite song on this list uh, from uh, Batman. A Kiss from a Rose. Oh, nice. classic. So uh, let's talk about kisses. The inaugural MTV Best Kiss Award was awarded to two actors for which 1992 film? One of those actors was a once and future precocious child, and the other grew up to be a vice presidential aide. Based on Metacritic scores, I would say this is a B-movie at best, so don't feel bad if you haven't seen it. Okay, I just got Jeff's clue at the end there <laughs> that he's stuck in at the end. Okay, we're going to lock in. I have no idea. Oh no! <laughs> well, what was the what was the clue? What's the end, end of the question? Uh, the end of the question is: um, I said you shouldn't feel bad if you haven't seen it based on Metacritic scores. It's a B movie at best. A B movie, not the bees. It's not that's the, bees, the Wicker that's Man, but <laughs> it's not bedazzled. Okay. Okay. One of Ken's favorites. <laughs> oh, it could be the Nick Wicker Cage. Man. Nick Give Cage and Cher. So uh, Moonstruck. You're going to say Moonstruck? Was that Nick Cage and Cher? I don't know. That was Cher for sure. Yeah. That is Nick Cage and Cher. You're going to go Moonstruck. And Neil? Moonstruck is a good guess. I will say, you know, this is a nice little tie into the first half of the game. Um, The 70s and 80s, I think, were more upset about Atreyu uh, and the death of the horse. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this is our generation's uh, terrible. Artax. Mm -hmm. Artax, uh, which is my girl when (laughs) Macaulay Culkin dies from the bees. Can't see without his glasses. (laughs) The correct answer here is my girl. <laughs> what a traumatic right, experience. Good, good hint. Good hint. <laughs> that's the good version of the joke that you tried to tell before. <laughs> that's the same joke, but just that's the yeah. way to tell it's it. It's the better Pearl S. Buck. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next one here is a Sean Colvin song, which I rediscovered my love for uh, thanks to writing this game. Sunny Came Home. Oh, yeah. Sunny Came Home. Oh, yeah. I hate that song. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be on VH1 all the time. Yeah. Just repeated. Um, so Sunny Came Home. Sunny with a Chance is an American teen sitcom that aired on Disney Channel for two seasons between February 2009 and January 2011. The series centers on Sunny Monroe, portrayed by which singer and actress? We are locked in right away. <laughs> Playing a teenage comedian from Wisconsin who joins the cast of a sketch comedy comedy television series titled so random after moving to hollywood Ugh. oh man 
Oh, it's like a it's so random exclamation mark for anybody who couldn't get that. It's like a big fans over here. Parade of Disney stars. Sunny, Sunny with a chance. Uh, you guys are locked in. Oh yeah, Miley Cyrus. No, Selena Gomez. Uh, no. Vanessa Hutchins. Okay, okay. Uh, she was on McCready. I, I, isn't that is... from the thing? Isn't that <laughs> no, Kurt Russell's name? character? No, that's, that's from that's from Carly Sam Girl. and Kat. Miranda Cosgrove. That's who he's thinking of, Miranda Cosgrove. Yeah. No, he uh, said Jeanette Mc... McCurdy. Oh, McCurdy. oh, Jeanette McCurdy. McCurdy, oh, not McCready. McCready is from the thing. That's uh, Kurt Russell. Did she quit acting now? Yeah, yes. Also, yes she she so who do we want to say? Oh, I, I'm still trying to think oh, okay. of it. Um, she was on Sweet Life on Deck, I think. If you name more Disney shows, it's not going to help. You I know. you got to say uh, something not like, Disney that she was I think uh, Mark's... She was, oh, there, there was the one show where she was really... It's weird. She was fat, and then she got like punched really hard in the face and got her jaw wired shut, and then she was hot and a model and something like that. <laughs> oh, that was a movie. I do remember this. The 90s That's were insane. a crazy time. No, it was not the 90s. No, that was like recent. five years yeah. ago. What? <laughs> like it's out now. Oh, oh God. That sounds horrible. Oh. Oh. That's, what's her name? I was going to say that's the most offensive thing I've heard today, but... Uh, just wait. Maybe not. Well, just watch, wait. Watch yeah. this be wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Sunny with a chance. Oh, wait. <sighs> Should have written the meatballs mm, question. Mm. Okay, okay. It's not her. It's the one from Camp Rock, I think. That doesn't help me. Oh, 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 oh okay, 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 okay. Who's not I'm gonna, Jonas? I'm going to lock in with Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato. <sighs> Mark pulling a classic trivial pull out of his ass. <laughs> I, was, I was just going to say Demi Lovato, and I was like, that doesn't seem like the right timeline. Uh, yeah, we're, we're big fans of Demi Lovato over here. Matt just bought her uh, new album that's all rock versions of her last big album, uh, Hard Rock. Uh, we said Demi Lovato. Actually, some of those are quite good. And yes, the answer is Demi Lovato. Very good singer. Very, very good singer live, too, as, as well. Very talented. If she only did it part-time, though, she'd be semi-Lovato. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> right now. And uh, question four here. Um, we are moving on to the 2000s and uh, everyone's favorite. A uh, collab, smooth. Oh, oh yes, um, that is my favorite collab. It's on my do not play list for the wedding. One. Today is a hot one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We played that in band uh, at NIU. We had to play that ad nauseum, smooth with Rob Thomas. So it will be on my do not play list for the you wedding. You had to play it with Rob Thomas. <laughs> well, not with Rob Thomas. That would have been fun. But Wait, no, you, you played it on the farm. You said ag nauseum. <laughs> yeah, ag- yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, the category, as we mentioned, smooth. Scientific units need to have a benchmark against which all devices can be measured. How do we know the exact distance of a meter? Easy. We have a bar in France that we've all decided is a meter. The kilogram, though, that's a tricky one. Beginning in the 1990s, members of a worldwide collaboration have been working to describe the kilogram using what number? Name for an Italian scientist and lawyer and uniform crystal of silicon 28. The ball is carefully machined into a sphere with a mass of one kilogram, if the sphere were the size of the Earth, the variation on the surface would be less than three meters. Holy guacamole. That's smooth. The only thing I heard, Matt, was holy guacamole, which I'm assuming is a clue. Doesn't someone say holy guacamole like a character? It's not Robin, right? Batman Robin. Like, holy guacamole, Batman. But It could be. He does say holy dot dot dot. So it's Robinito. It could we just say Robin? Like Jeopardy Rolls is like someone like Francisco Robin or something? Robinette? Robin A? Or Robin A? Isn't that a person? Is it? I don't know. Sounds no. Italian. Robin A? <laughs> Sounds a form. Electric music star Robin with a Y? Oh, yeah. The classic. I don't know. what I have no idea. Uh, I'm fine with Robin. We're not going to get anything better. Okay. We'll say Robin. Uh, just pulling from high school science here, I went with Avogadro because there's Avogadro's ah, number. Oh. Guacamole. Yeah, so I wasn't even intending the guacamole thing. Uh, I was just trying to point you to uh, the mole, which is Avogadro's number. But yeah, it uh, it had that a little tie-in as well, so well done. Nice poll. <laughs> <No. laughs> so you recognize the mole part, but not, not, the, the, not that Avogadro <laughs> sounds like, like avocado. avocado. <laughs> <laughs> the way that Jeff's mind works <laughs> just blows mine. <laughs> All right. That's uh, question four. On to question five in the second half here. Uh, everyone's favorite John Mayer song, Daughters. Mm. Actually, not mine, but... How would... I don't want to make any comment about that. <laughs> we have to sign an NDA if we do. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, so Hollywood seems to be full of famous children these days, which makes sense. Talented people with connections are going to have a special leg up on the rest of us. Which famous actress? Maya is the... Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they've locked in with Maya Hawk. Uh, would you guys like to hear the rest of the question? So, uh, <laughs> just kidding. 
Which famous actress is the daughter of Jane Mansfield and a bodybuilder named Mickey? The last name was redacted to protect the innocent or to not spoil the question. So these guys are locked in, and we're trying to think of Jane's, Jane Mansfield's daughter. Uh, we don't really have any ideas, though, right? No. But we, we got roughly the age. They should be about 60, 70 now, right? That's, that's what we think, yeah. Mm, man, I, I, I have no idea. Now I'm just blanking on any actresses. <laughs> um, <laughs> Judy Dench. <laughs> She's older than that. Um, yeah. Do you just want to tap on this one? I'm going to go with Judy Dench on the Judy random Dench. off chance. This Dame is, Judy Dench. This is a really good question, uh, Jeff. What The answer came to me because I thought, you know, this room of triviality would be in a big trouble if uh, Ice-T came in the room and said, I found semen. Because uh, his partner, uh, Mariska Hargitay from Law & Order SVU, is the daughter of Jane Mansfield. We weren't about to get that. So. I just saw that on Reddit the other day. I forgot <laughs> it. You guys are correct. It is Mariska Hargitay. Where are we uh, standing after five questions, guys? Yeah, at the end of five questions, uh, we are at 125. And taking ever so slight a lead is uh, the other team, whatever you are called, 130. Mm-hmm. We I are. We said the team names one time this game. <laughs> yeah, you're Fairy Bueller's. We're Bueller, Fairy Bueller's Day with Triviality. And we're pretty in Cubby Blue. That's because I don't have anything. That's because there's not very good team names. Well, <laughs> I don't have anything written in front of me, so I'm not dropping them either. Um, but yeah. Great. Uh, let's move on to uh, the second half of round two here. Uh, the next uh, one up on the list is Viva La Vida. Um, or as I like to call it, the last half decent Coldplay album. Um, the Coldplay song and the album Viva La Vida is named for a painting by which Mexican surrealist painter? Mm-hmm. The painter is well known for self-portraits, but her other works, including The Broken Column and Henry Fort Hospital, mm-hmm. are much more visceral and speak directly to the pain she endured most of her life. And I wrote this question mostly so people check out those paintings because they are really cool. Uh, we've all seen the movie here, so we're locked in. <laughs> yeah, we Matt's have all seen the movie. Matt's here. hitting the bass drum for the entire song. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you can lock in, Matt. Uh, we said Frida. Frida Kahlo. And Frida Kahlo is correct. Uh, so you guys only said Frida, so no points. Jeffrey Rules. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I know. You knew what you were talking about, so uh, we'll Some be high. fine with it. Some high, yeah. <laughs> Title of the movie. All right. Uh, moving on to, I believe, the 2010s here uh, with Single Ladies. Hmm. Uh, people love to talk about the many marriages of Zsa, Zsa Gabor and Liz Taylor, but we never hear about those men who have left a trail of single ladies in their wake. I'll give you the list of nuptials, and all I need from you is to know which actor they were all married to. Uh, from 87 to 1990, Leslie Manville. Uh, from 1990 to 1992, Uma Thurman. From 97 until they divorced in 2001, Donna Fiorentino. In 2008, they married Alexa Alexandra Edinburgh, a union that ended with their 2015 divorce, and uh, so far so good with their marriage to Giselle Schmidt since 2017. Matt and I uh, had a long discussion and about memes, uh, and I don't know if this will help the team or not, but we thought, you know, because Leslie Manville was British, uh, this actor, pretty British, we, we named a bunch of British actors we think might have come up onto the scene in the early 90s, and we locked in with an answer. Mr. B. I've, I've kind of got an idea here. Um, based on the timeline, I don't think it would be a specifically young men, but what about an old man? <laughs> sure. We can lock in with Gary. Yeah, we, we thought it was Gary, too. And you guys are right. It is Gary Oldman. Right. Yeah, I didn't want to give you any of his film roles because you guys are pretty well-versed with that, so I thought I would go more on the personal side. I was trying to think who would have like started to get popular and been a young buck. And first we said DDL, but they were like, there's no way. Because he was in the movie Phantom Thread with, uh, <laughs> with Leslie Manville. Manville. Yeah. All right, question eight. Uh, Adele, Rolling in the Deep. Big hit for her. Uh, so as you can imagine, even as a small child, I had quite the fondness for geography. I learned about many countries, rivers, and lakes. The first map that I ever had had a large sea on it in the Soviet Union. As subsequent maps came out, I was shocked to see the sea disappear before my eyes. Once the fourth largest lake in the world with an area of 68,000 kilometers square. What body of water began shrinking in the 1960s after the rivers that fed it were diverted by Soviet irrigation projects? By 2007, it had declined to 10% of its original size, splitting into four separate lakes, the largest of which is only the 41st largest lake on earth the lake uh, shrunk because it was in the pool right 
You got to take that it's into cold. account. Jerry. Like a frightened turtle. It's cold. <laughs> So we're looking for a, a body of water that starts with a C. I, I'm looking for a C that literally disappeared off the face of the earth in the last start 40 with a years. C. It is a C. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I heard it starts with a C, and I was like, I don't know. I, have no I got idea. it. I oh, it. you know it. I'm oh, locked in. Man. Yeah. Mark is a smart cookie, as they uh, say. So Mark is locked in. Uh, so go ahead, guys. What do you think? A C that's dissipating. The Dead Sea? Well, it's. The Dead Sea still exists. It still exists. Still very large. Ironically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have the no idea. Dead Dead sea. Sea. Once Jeff started talking about bodies of water, I checked out. Uh-huh. You mean because it wasn't... Uh... Oh, God. What's the movie I wanted to make a reference to? We don't know. No, uh, Shape of Water. <laughs> oh, Shape of Water. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jennifer's body so, of water. <laughs> <laughs> it was 70%. So We don't know. Uh, the... The C that was but isn't. Yeah, we'll lock in with the C that was but what isn't. Mm, interesting choice. <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> that they named it that before it disappeared. What do we have? Uh, walked in with the Aral C. Yeah, this is the uh, Aral C, um, which is uh, crazy. Like it was the first time like I'd ever really gotten into kind of like the history behind things because it's literally disappeared off the face of the earth since yeah. we were born. Is this the things C change? You know, is this the crazy. C that Errol Flynn was named after? Uh, yes. Shockingly, it was. Okay. It was named after a Kazakhstani sea. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> Question nine. Uh, thinking out loud. In 2014, fans of which NFL franchise set the Guinness World Record for stadium noise in a game against the New England Patriots when they hit an eardrum rattling 142 decibels in a 41-14 win? That's louder than when a jet engine take uh, airplane takes off. And all for a team that hadn't even won a Super Bowl in 45 years. Mm. No, it's right. Oh, it so looks like we're locked in right. here. What do you guys have? Yeah, this was uh, Beast Mode's run in the playoffs. Oh, okay. So this is the 12th man. This is the 12th man. We're, we're loud, as, uh, very loud that day. Yeah, Seattle Seahawks. So I thought it was different. I thought since you mentioned the not in 45 years, it was uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. At Arrowhead Stadium? Mm. Yeah, so the good news uh, here is um, they have won two since. It's wow. the Kansas City Chiefs. Oops. Let's go. You wrote KC. I did wrote like, KC, nah. yeah. I heard it's really loud there. That's why I, I, I put it down. Mm. All that Mahomes love and Kelsey love. But you know who doesn't love Kelsey? Taylor Swift. Mm. Yeah. He tried to give her a friendship place that she, she Brace. denied. <laughs> Brace, sorry, I don't know why it came out that way. Brace, like, because they're, they're childish. <laughs> that's childish. why. <laughs> I'm not saying that they're wrong, but you can have your friendship bracelet, bracelets. I need them too. <laughs> Abominable. I see. I can say that word now. I can't say bracelets anymore. Okay. Anyway, Mark, does your uh, back hurt from carrying the team, or are you still good? I'm doing all right. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> all right. Last question in regulation. This is America. We often speak of baseball as America's national pastime, but with the viewing numbers and the enthusiasm of fans, it seems like football is the real winner here. Well, not all winners. Uh, while three straight years of drafting a receiver in the first round headlined, headlined the Matt Millen era, the 2008 <laughs> season was perhaps the last straw for fans of which franchise. Starting off with a 4-0 preseason record, optimism uh, quickly devolved as the subsequent 16-game freefall that ensued left fans in shock. 0-16. Ouch. Mm-hmm. The worst record yeah. in NFL history. Was there a history. question? Yeah. What's this terrible what team? team? What team? Locked in. Yeah. Two football questions in a row? Just for the record, that was oh. nine, right? This is nine? This, this is, is ten. ten. This is ten. This is the end. Oh, maybe I missed where it all ends. So we have it. Okay. We know. Yeah. All right, uh, Matt, um, it's got to be the Lions, right? Yeah, actually the favorites to win the division this year. So yeah. maybe things are turning around. Maybe this, if you listen to this episode three years from now, you're like, the Lions are great. Right. I mean, enough we kneecaps were bitten off that they they made a difference. Who knows? Yeah. So one thing I didn't know ahead of time was where our guest was coming from today. <laughs> uh, so Mark, what is the right answer? So it's the Detroit Lions, not the other 0-16 team, the Browns. <laughs> yes, which is uh, the team you grew up with. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I told Mark I didn't write a question about the 0-16 Browns earlier, uh, but I did write one about the 2008 Detroit Lions. So you guys are both right. Well done. Oh, what are... I, I didn't even write anything for that C1 because it was ridiculous. So that's why I didn't, I didn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, with uh, the end of regulation, we had a perfect uh, second half here. So we're at 175. Mm. And we picked up 30 points, uh, bringing us uh, only 15 points behind. So we still have some ground to cover here, but we're at 160. You had it and you lost it. We did. Um, and on that note, we'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. Yeah, uh, Mark, uh, you're a Patreon supporter um, for a long time. We really appreciate it. Obviously, this whole day is about you, and, and uh, we appreciate Taylor uh, helping facilitate that. But um, what did you like about becoming a patron? Uh, just getting the extra content. The crop drops are a view into you guys just hang out as friends, which is hilarious. And then ad-free is always nice. Yeah, we always love doing the crop drops because yeah, we Ad get to free. Did you hear that, guys? Ad free, Ad free. for as little as a dollar a month. Just a dollar a month, and often early access, depending on if I've had time <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to release it early. Uh, but yeah, we can uh, we can supply all the extra bonus content that you need uh, if you go to patreoncom slash podcast. You can join Mark and so many other great folks and uh, come hang out and and join the show. All right, let's take it into today's final round. Um, categories, uh, I did continue to track with the uh, the music a little bit. Uh, I originally thought about writing a Justin, JC, et cetera type mm -hmm. of final, but I think we've done that before. This one I think we've done too, but I thought I'd put my own spin on it. So your five uh, categories in the final round are going to be baby, ginger, posh, scary, and sporty. I don't know if this has ever been done. Has this been done before? I think it might have been Several done once. I think so. <laughs> but uh, I will say that uh, unlike normal, um, these do sort of track with uh, the categories. So okay. Well, I'm specifically looking forward to question number two. <laughs> <laughs> and all the wagers are now locked in, so let's go ahead and, and get the questions. All right. Your category here being baby, here's your question. With 45 births, Per 1,000 people, which landlocked country in West Africa has the highest birth rate in the world? It's a unitary state bordered by Mali to the west. Uh, it covers a land area of almost 490,000 square miles, making it the largest landlocked country in West Africa. Over 80% of the land lies in the Sahara. Its predominantly Muslim population of about 25 million live in clusters in the south and west of the country. Great. Ginger. Which spice, which comes from the pungent, fleshy root of a plant bearing the same name, is most often made into a condiment? Native to Mediterranean lands, the root is traditionally considered medicinal and is commonly used as a substitute for wasabi. Posh. Bravo's Real Housewives series kicked off with its first version, The Real Housewives of Orange County, in March of 2006. The show has spun off into international versions and more than 20 individual spin-offs following individual cast members, the most famous of which is Neil's favorite, Vanderpump Rules. To date, of the 10 series named for U.S. cities or regions, only two have been canceled. I want you to give me both cities that have lost their Real Housewives series. As a hint, both could have been abbreviated R-H-O-D. All right, the question in scary. As we approach spooky season, I am always drawn to the allure of the classic movie monsters. My favorite costume that I donned as a small child was that of Dracula. With that in mind, what is the highest grossing film based around the character of Dracula? And your question in sporty. The Maurice Rocket Richard Trophy is given out annually to the NHL player with the most goals scored in a season. The trophy was first awarded in the 98-99 season and most recently was given to Connor McDavid of the Edmonton Oilers. Which player, who capitalized on as many opportunities as he could with his time in the league, currently holds the record for most wins at nine? And those are our questions. We'll be right back with the answers after this break. And we are back with our answers. Time to find out who will be the cream of the crop and who will not be the cream of the crop. Oh. Darn skippy. <laughs> Devastating. <laughs> we have a cream of the crop, but we don't have a name for the loser. It's just yeah. not the cream of the crop. Cream of the knot. Uh, well, if you, what do you separate the cream from the? The chaff. Yeah, so you're the chaff of the crop. <laughs> 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 Sounds way worse than it is. Mm -hmm. All right. Category baby uh, i wanted to know which landlocked west african country has the highest birth rate on earth uh we picked a country that's also a great baby name chad oh mm. we wagered 30 points on this and oh so did we wow we said ethiopia all right uh unfortunately neither team uh getting this one uh this is the country of niger or mm. the niger depending on 
how they have their Wikipedia page. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The question in ginger. I wanted to know which spice often made into a condiment is usually substituted for true wasabi. And either way, I don't care for it. I love it. Um, do you want to go ahead and answer for 30 points? Yeah. Uh, we said horseradish. Oh, that totally oh, makes sense. That's great. We lost 20 points here and we said St. <laughs> John's Wort. That you did. The answer is horseradish. All right. The question in posh. Um, it's funny, this question, I didn't know how to write about posh people, so I was like, what's the opposite of posh? And I was like, I'm going to write about reality television. So it kind of works either way. Um, so all I want to know is which of the two uh, American cities uh, had Real Housewives series that have since been canceled. Now, I'm going to say the reason I wrote the question the way I did is because there is a Real Housewives series that's considered part of the American installments. But it's not an American city uh, because it's Real Housewives of Dubai. So okay. just wanted to be clear about that. Uh, for 30 points, uh, we said Dallas was probably one and uh, Detroit for the other. Yep. Uh, we wagered 20 on this one. This is uh, thanks to my mom, who's a Bravoholic. We said Dallas and D.C. And the correct answers are Dallas and D.C., Ouch, which um, apparently people are not a fan of the uh, Real Housewives of the Capitol because it got canned almost immediately. Mm -hmm. That's probably why we hadn't heard of it, Mark. Yeah, I would think so. All right, your fourth question here in Scary. What is the highest grossing film based around the character of Dracula? And I'm using around here loosely. We're just saying Dracula is a named character. Okay. For 30 points, we thought it had to be Hotel Transylvania because we can't really think of a good like blockbuster with Dracula, to be honest. Yep. Uh, we wagered 20 on this one. Uh, we had a similar conversation. We thought if it wasn't Dracula-specific, a vampire movie probably would have been one of the Twilights, but we know that animated movies make a ton of money, and uh, we knew that Hotel Transylvania 2 made a lot more money than the first ones. So we said 2. All right, if this was a, strictly speaking, horror movie, um, the correct answer would have been Van Helsing uh, with just over $300 million, But with over $472 million uh, off, uh, box office gross worldwide, the answer is Hotel Transylvania 2. Shucks. <laughs> yeah, that was a hard one to research, so, but I'm um, glad it uh, teams, uh, you know, one of them figured it out. Last question here. Sporty, feel like Ken's got this one in the bag. I want to know who currently holds the record for the most wins of the Maurice Rocket Richard Trophy with nine. Uh, for our last 30 points, we said Ovechkin. Yeah, I think I had it without the capital clue as well. We said 30, uh, 30 points for Ovechkin. Yep, I wrote the question that way in case Ken and Matt were on the same team. Uh, <laughs> the answer is Alex Ovechkin. All right, so uh, how did we all do? How are we feeling after that one? It wasn't as brutal as I uh, normally not, write not them. Not good. Uh, Ferry, Ferry Bueller's uh, Day with Triviality. We had a great day. We contemplated art, as I said, but uh, we only ended up with 145. And uh, we picked up 20 in the final round here, but it was just enough to take the lead uh, with Matt's uh, coming home, the prodigal son return. So we have 180. You know what that means. You're the cream of the crop. Cream of the crop. Nice job, Matt. We don't get to play nice too job, often. Matt. <laughs> well, I, I, we never get to play together, especially in person too. And, and our knees were touching a little bit during the game, so a little, a, bit. I think a little that, bit extra electricity. That energy was yeah, that going was back and forth. Spark that <laughs> propelled us towards greatness today. Um, it was nice being in the studio. I love playing with all of our Zoom contestants all the time, but it is nice to be in the studio. And we do that mostly for logistical purposes. It's good yeah. to see and smell. And you, Matt's Matt. a great host. Yeah. So. I bring a familiar musk to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> the old East Coast Musk. Uh, Mark, though, uh, well, and Ken, but Mark, what a competitor. Mark, you were, Mark crushed it. it yeah. I would have been lost without him. And you said you play trivia by yourself a lot of times. Yeah. That so tracks. makes sense. I'm used to carrying the team, so I tried my best. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. It was no different. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, thank you so much uh, for joining us today for this game. It was so special to get to do this with you. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to shout out or say hello to or anything before we go? Any, any final words here? Uh, yeah. Shout out, obviously, to my girlfriend, Taylor, who organized this all together. Um, shout out to, you know, my friends and family who also contributed. And just, uh, yeah, shout out to you guys for and having me And I hope for here. listening. Yeah, so. thank you. And unlike uh, Travis Kelsey, Taylor did accept your friendship bracelet. Yes, she did. Yeah. It took her a couple times to say yes. <laughs> did it? Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> She's still accepted. Uh, well, yeah, we really appreciate it. All your support for being a patron along with all of our other patrons. Uh, and speaking of uh, the Discord uh, and the crop, a lot of people get their games play tested. Jeff obviously did not for today's game. Uh, Clearly. For some, for some of those jokes. <laughs> uh, but thank you to all I our play testers. I wanted this humor to remain my own. 
occasionally Louis tasteless. Would have, Louis would have said, too long. <laughs> <laughs> this joke doesn't work. Uh, so thank you, Louis, and all the playtesters uh, for continually doing that for us. We really appreciate it. We want to make sure we shout you out. And, and I make fun of Jeff a little bit, but really great game. Good questions. Uh, I loved it. I, you, know, you know I'm hard on you. But uh, you know who's uh, very helpful to us? Airwave Media. Ooh. Uh, they can be found at uh, <laughs> Airwave Media is in the chat. <laughs> they can be found at airwavemedia.com with other great shows such as Ancient History Fangirl, History of Egypt, and History of Everything, if you're really into history. And if you're not, there's other shows. Check it out. Yeah, check out airwavemedia.com. And if you're not, I'm sorry about like eight of the questions I wrote today <laughs> and the swing round. And uh, Mark, I think you know how we end the show, so I'll throw it to you. But for Ken, Jeff, Matt, uh, Neil, and Mark, that was Triviality. Triviality.